Hi, we're here with Dayton Does Dayton. What's your name? Uh, Roger Smith. All right, we're here downtown. Can you name three positive things that Mayor Nan Whaley has done for Dayton, Ohio? Uh, well, Mayor uh, Whaley has supported the uh, arts uh, by supporting the uh, venue downtown. I've seen her there. Uh, she is uh, really positive with local businesses. I, I saw her uh, even the, uh, last night when the Century was closing uh, for the re remodel, she was there. But she's also just been such a strong leader uh, through uh, the tornadoes and the shootings. Uh, she's just been a really positive influence on the city. Can you name um, like three things? You said the tornadoes. The tornado, the, the supporting local music and the local venues uh, and local businesses. Uh, you know, of course, um, she has also. Uh, you know, when I've watched her interview, she's kind of stood up, um, like when the president came to town, uh, a lot of people were kind of not, they were kind of holding back their opinions, and I felt she did a good job at staying true to herself and kind of expressing her opinions in those times. Okay. You think she's doing a good job on the over 7,000 boarded up houses in Dayton? Uh, you know, it's such a massive endeavor. Uh, the west side, the north side, the east side, they're all so, so problematic. Um, there's been a lot of focus on central Dayton, uh, and of course, you know, just south is Oakwood, so not really Dayton's prerogative, but uh, I have noticed some difference going north along the river on Riverside, but it seems like trying to deal with, with like tornado damage all through Riverside and whatever, it's just, it's such a massive endeavor. But as far as boarded up buildings, I know she's been spearheading the uh, efforts to bring the arcade back. Uh, they've been working with some other local groups to get artists in there. But like I said, it's more central. Um, it's just, that's a big ask. Uh, you know, kind of bigger than what I would expect one person to really be able to handle. Okay, great. Um, one last thing we can talk about. Who can afford to live in downtown Dayton? Do you think that people who live in the greater Dayton inner city, do you think they can afford to live downtown? Uh, you know, it, it depends on where your boundaries are. Uh, the McPherson town. Uh, but we're, we're talking about the lofts down here uh, in Dayton, like the Cannery, the cannery. Fire Blocks District. Can, can people in the inner city, can they take advantage of living in downtown Dayton? Can they afford to live here in downtown Dayton? Not in those particular laws. Why, like, why is that? Why, why is that? Uh, well, that's just part of gentrification in general. That kind of started back when the ball stadium went in with the Ice Avenue lofts and the Cooper lofts. They were kind of the first ones that came in, the cannery. Um, you know, you and the investment that went into those just requires a, a higher ticket. Uh, I know the towers are kind of a more affordable place, but, but yeah, the new lofts, yeah, they're, they're upper, upper price range for are, sure. Okay, are any of the companies that own these lofts downtown, are any of them from Dayton? Um, the developers, Rain and Klish, uh, developed the Ice Avenue lofts, but see, they sold those off. I, I'm not sure the management property is now. The uh, developer for the Cooper lofts, his name was Matt Stormer. Um, he is a local guy. Uh, I've been kind of out of the scene. I used to do construction down here uh, about 15 years ago. But, uh, yeah, those, those are the only ones I know of, and, and they're local. So why aren't there any grocery stores or any commodities in downtown Dayton? Especially since question. it could be up to three, it can be up to $3,000 after your bills are paid here, and there isn't a single grocery store down here. Yeah, how, why is that? That's not like any other city with urban living. Uh, that is a true statement and a, and a horrible fact. Um, I'm not sure why it's been hard to get that kind of investment. I, I would like to see the smaller mom and pops all over from the west side, from the east side, get together and come up with a, a co-op that makes it easy for people to invest in their businesses. I would love to invest in that somehow to get it here because it is a real necessity. I'm just not sure what the trigger is to get those um, co-ops or get those avenues for like middle class, up, you know, upper level investment into those into those things because uh, it's, it's a di dire need. Well, do you think that's fair that... The companies that own these lofts downtown are not even from Dayton, and they get all these tax breaks and incentives, and there's no grocery stores downtown, and the people who live downtown really aren't even from the Dayton area. You know, do you think that's fair? Do, do you think that, that it really helps Dayton 
to have these lofts down here, do you think it helps Greater Dayton as a whole, considering the money from the investors really not going into Dayton, it's kind of going into the pocketbooks of out-of-town investors? What do you think about that real quick before we go? Uh, well, I would, I would have to, it's a, it's a very broad question, and if it's true they are out-of-town, that, that is a very good question. Uh, like I say, the guys who I've known have been local, but uh, the idea of bringing money into a community, those people are going to have needs that they need service that hopefully will trickle through the community. I, I know that's a horrible term, and I'm not a fan of trickle-down economics. Uh, there's got to be some stabilizing factors. I'm not sure what they are, but, uh, yeah, but do, automation has done a number on this area. But do you think that maybe just putting a Band-Aid on things and making Dayton, downtown Dayton look good when the money's, it doesn't seem like the money's really going back into Dayton. I mean, if there's nowhere to really shop downtown, I mean, there's retail stores down here for sure, yeah. but if the money's, if there's no grocery stores down here and there's no commodities and the company's not even from Dayton, and what if these companies file bankruptcy and we don't, and they get these taxes, and what if we never see the money from them? Well, that's money that's lost to the citizens of this community. That's, that's true, and that's you know, uh, there's been a lot of talk about that, and in the meantime, if you got to put a Band-Aid on or bandage to stop the bleeding, that's fine until you can get those things in place. So I guess there's been promises on those things. I would love to see those promises uh, fulfilled and get those get those items in place. Great. And then one last question. If you had a scale from 1 to 10 to judge me or Nan Whaley, how would you judge that between 1 and 10? Um, I would give Nan Whaley an 8. Great. Thank you very much. This has been Dayton Does Dayton here in downtown Dayton, Ohio. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you.